Hi everyone, this is Caitlin Springer from the Florida Orchestra and today we're going to talk about the Kreutzer Etude number no. 7, the 9th and 10th grade etude requirement for all state this year. All right, so this etude is like 95% arpeggios and scales. So let's start just by getting set in our key, which is A major. Now we're going to do a two octave, A major scale, and arpeggio. I'm going to set the drone on A, and we're just going to try this out. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> A major. A major is a great key. All right, so you can repeat that as much as you need to. What we're going to do now is we're going to see if we can apply that scale to some of our passage work. So if you're following along on our worksheet here, we've got a breakdown starting from measure three and going into measure four. We've got a breakdown of this little arpeggiation pattern here. So what we do is we practice it first with a simple fingering. And this is a trick that I use when I'm practicing my orchestra music, when I'm practicing for an audition, or when I'm just for like a recital or anything. I practice with a simple fingering before I try it with a difficult fingering, just so I can get it in my ear. So let's try that out, simple fingering. And you go back down. So it kind of resets the arpeggio each time. Now let's see what that sounds like in the real fingering. It should sound exactly the same. Let's see what we could do. So the goal here is to get the second version, the written fingering, to sound exactly the same as the first version, the simple fingering. And the tempo doesn't matter here. I would go really, really slow, like I just did, and you could break it down. Um, you could break it down in that grouping. I like that grouping because it's going up, goes back, goes up again, goes back, goes up again. But um, it really doesn't matter. What matters is that you have a focus and you're listening with a goal. So our goal here is to make the, si the second version sound exactly like the first version. All right, so what happens after that? We're playing that E and now hello A major scale, we meet again. So that's why we're practicing the A major scale in arpeggio before we even practice this piece, because half of this piece is A major scales and arpeggios. So after that, what do we have? The A major arpeggio again. So that tells you everything you need to know about this piece. Well, not really. There's a lot that goes on in this piece. It changes keys all the time. It's really nice. All right, so the third thing that we do on our worksheet is we break down the ending. And just looking at this Kreutzer, a lot of these Kreutzers have the tendency to have these really flashy endings that are very technical and challenging. So it's always good to just take a peek at the ending and just make sure that it's, it's either going to be okay, it's a nice ending, or it's one of those really flashy endings. This is one of those really flashy endings. So we're actually gonna start practicing the ending early in our practice routine. So let's just look 
at the last two bars here. Oh my goodness gracious, we've got some really high notes. We're hitting up into that third A major octave. So let's break it down. I really like to do this, um, this exercise called cross and shift that I learned from one of my first teachers, Michelle LaCourse, when I was going to Boston University. She taught me this and basically what you do is every time you have a string crossing, you freeze before you play the next note and you say the word cross. And every time you have a shift, you freeze before the next note and you say shift. And this kind of gives you a verbal cue, like, oh, my hands have to do something different. So let me just remind them that this is what's going on. So let's try this out. So this is the last two bars broken down by cross and shift. Starting in fourth position, lovely. Okay, let's try it out. We have A, C sharp, cross, 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 shift. Make sure you're aiming so that you're gonna replace where your fourth finger would be. And then cross, cross back, and then you're gonna do a bit of an extension slash shift. And you're gonna do a big shift for that last harmonic, that last note. Now a harmonic note, just in case you haven't had a lot of experience with harmonics, a harmonic note is where you don't actually push the string all the way down, but you just graze your finger on top of the string so that you're just touching it slightly and from there, um, it creates another pitch. So the easiest ones to find are the ones right in the middle of the string. That's your A. What's your lower A? And this is your higher A. This is where we're going to end. So look at how close that is to the top of the fingerboard there. So my arm is all pivoted pretty much all the way in and my hand is all the way around, and I have a viola with thick ribs, so I actually have to have my thumb in like thumb position. Practically playing cello here. And then the other trick is to have a flat bow here, and to kind of play a little closer to the bridge. And you're gonna float the bow, so it's just gonna move um, freely. Okay, so that's, that let's practice that a couple times because that is a that's a great challenge that's it it's a great challenge all right let's try it again so from that a find that a again you check with your open a cross 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 shift cross cross tricky. Now let's see if we can um, kind of play it more seamlessly and without the big freeze. So we're just going to reduce the amount of time we're freezing between each note and we're going to try it again. So this is from that A again. You can always check with your open A. Cross, 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 shift, cross, and a big old shift. So it's it's kind of hard to remember when you um, take the freeze out. It's kind of harder to remember to say the word, but let's see what it's gonna sound like if I don't say the word and if I just play it seamlessly and kind of in that same tempo. like that. So if I were to practice this every day, I could start feeling more and more confident about it. So that's going to be the challenge. In your practice sessions, you're going to have to start practicing this really challenging section 
early on so that as you keep going, it gets easier and easier and easier. Don't start with the beginning all the time and then play a little bit, play through some more and then play through some more. And then four weeks later, like a week before Allstate, now you finally got to that last line and it's like, ah, no, just start practicing it now. It's worth it. So let's see what it's kind of going to sound like after a couple of practices. And you might go a little bit faster by the time the audition comes because I think the tempo is going to be something like this. So that last part's going to end up being faster. So make sure you start practicing that ending now. Practice the ending now and then practice it tomorrow and the day after and the day after. I promise it will get easier. So yeah, that's Kreutzer 7 in a nutshell. Just a couple ways that you could practice all of these different things. And yeah, yep. I'll see you guys next time. Hope this helps.